brought us to your house today. And we just feel honored, God, to be able to hear your word so that we could apply your word. God, we thank you because I know that this world is desperate for you. And God, we want to be the light in a dark world. Would you help us, please, Holy Spirit, to comprehend, help us to put into practice every word that uh, you share with us today. God, we make ourselves fully available to you. We remove all distractions. We remove anything, God, that wants to get on the way between you and us. We tell you we're fully here, fully present, God. We're here for you because we need you, God. We're not here just to socialize. We're not here just to, to be able to, to spend time with amazing people. God, we want you, Lord. We want you more than anything else. Thank you for everything around us. But God, we came for you. God, we don't want to leave this place without a full charge of you, God. With fully receiving, without fully receiving everything you have for us. Thank you, Jesus, so much. We love you. And in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Give God a big round of applause. And you may be seated. The word of God says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it on their a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, such a way, in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Say with me, let there be light. One more time, one more time. Let there be light. Tell the, tell the person next to you, let there be light. All right, your second choice, the other person, tell them, let there be light. You know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, right? We know that. This is Jesus Christ. Jesus calls himself the light of the world. He says, I am the light of the world, and those, as that, those that believe in me shall not walk in darkness. He calls himself the light of the world. As a matter of fact, Jesus, listen to this, said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Isn't that amazing that Christ calls himself, again, the light of the world. And yet in these verses, in Matthew chapter 5, he begins by saying, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You are the light of the world. Jesus is not saying try to be the light of the world. He's not saying do your best to be the light of the world. Or, but he says you are the light of the world. That is your identity, that is your call, that is our marching order, that is Jesus saying you are as I was while I walked on this earth. You have the greatest compliment from Christ saying you are my ambassador. You have taken the torch literally that I had while I was on this world. The same effect that I came to have to the world, the same impact that I had on this world, I'm expecting you to have it. He says, you are the light of the world. He said, while I was on this world, I was the light. But now, the person sitting next to you is the light of the world. The person sitting to the other side is the light of the world. You're sitting on the spot of the light of the world. He says, you are the light of the world. Either we're failing at it or we're doing great at it. But we are the light of the world. The question, and a good question is today, what does the light look like? What does the light of the world look like here? What are we meant to do? You know something that we are, the light of the world. I'm going to repeat that to you. That should sink deep into your heart. You are the light of the world. And if you live with someone who is a Christ follower, that person is the light of the world too. That your house is filled with light. Again, you are what? The light of the world. I, I want to pause right there for just a second. I, I, I have... Three awesome points that I think are going to bless you. But can I repeat that again just because it hit me so hard. That God is saying to you as he was, you are. As Jesus was while he was on this earth. The same purpose. The same power. The same efficiency to dissipate darkness. 
Jesus was the light of the world. And now you are the light of the world. I am the light of the world. You are the light of the world. He says to you again, you are the light of the world. And the light is supposed to do what? Shine. Point number one is just shine. If we are the light of the world, we are to shine and shine bright. If we are the light of the world, our job, our duty, our responsibility, our privilege is to shine. I want to challenge us as a church. I want to challenge you to think about this concept. That God has you in this world that you may shine. Not that you would survive. Not so you can get by. Not so you could not do as bad as others. But that you would shine. What, give God, what gives God more glory other than his children shining? Again, he says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. You are the light of the world. So many people walk in darkness today. How many people today are without vision? They don't know what their next day will look like. They don't know what their marriage will look like in a year. They don't have a clue. They don't have vision for their family. They don't have vision for their own lives. Listen, a lot of people in this world are walking in darkness and you have the antidote. You have the solution and his name is Jesus Christ. You and I do not walk in darkness. But why is it that some Christians, some believers act like they're walking in darkness? What is it about darkness that is so appealing? What is it about darkness, guys, that seems to be so prevalent in our world? If you look at the school system, the education system is full of darkness. If you turn the news on, it's full of darkness. If you talk to young people, it almost sounds so dark. It's almost like dreams. What dreams? What light? If you talk, please listen. If you look at statistics, you look at politics. My goodness, it's full of darkness. We live in the era with most information, and yet we live in the era of most confusion. Darkness. You know, light gives direction, and people seem nowadays to have less direction than ever before. People don't even know what they are anymore. They're so confused. There's so much darkness. There's darkness in areas that should be normal and, and should be clear. But there's no clarity because there is darkness. What is it about darkness that seems to be so appealing? See, because in darkness, can I tell you for a second, in darkness, you don't need to move. As a matter of fact, you're safer if you don't move forward. In darkness, you're better off by standing still, not having to grow or conquer. In darkness, there's great comfort, seemingly. In darkness, listen, in darkness, you don't have to help anyone. You don't have to do, anyone, do anything for anyone because at the end of the day, you're in darkness as well. In darkness, listen, there is no life. I know this, you cannot grow in darkness. It sounds strange. I know some of you guys don't realize this, but when you go out to the sun, your body, your cells, even your vitamins activate. If you leave someone in the dark, it means you're breaking them from communication. There is no relationship building. Relationship begin to die when you are in darkness. Darkness infiltrates everything. But I want to tell you something. That God says you are the light of the world. And what that means is that you inherently have the power to dissipate darkness. Darkness cannot be measured. Did you know that? That there is no measure of darkness. There's only the measure of light. You know that. You know that the only way that darkness exists is by the absence of light. Okay, somebody can tell me, what is the speed of darkness? What is the speed of darkness? How fast does darkness travel? Because light travels, travels at 671 miles per hour. That is the power of light. That is how fast light goes. That is how fast light travels. 671 million miles per hour. The power of light. And darkness cannot even be measured. Darkness cannot move. Darkness cannot survive when light is there. Can you see why the enemy is trying to stop you from going to your job or going to your school? Or going into politics or going into music? Because the moment you enter, light has to dissipate. Because light offense darkness light is offensive to darkness darkness cannot coexist with light 
And God is saying to you, you are the light of the world. And so long as you are here, there's still clarity. I want to tell you this. Please listen for a second. When God tells you that you are the light of the world, he's telling you, I am giving you the chance to be the hope of your friends, hope in your job, the hope in your family. Some of you don't know why you're the first Christian in your family. And I just want to tell you, you're not the first Christian in your family. You're the first light in the midst of darkness in your family. Give God a round of applause if you understand what I'm saying. God has purposed you to sit in a place where everything else would not matter. But you matter because you're the light of the world. One of the things that really ministered to me about these verses it says that you are the light of the world and the light should not be hidden. As a matter of fact, it says no one lights a lamp, right, and puts it under the table. Don't nobody hides it. Instead, you put it on a what? On a lampstand. Listen, a lot of people are trying to lift themselves up. And God would just say, just shine and I'll lift you up. I want to expose you to the world the right way. I want to show the world who I am through you. I want to be able to raise you. I want to be able to lift you up. Young people, can I just tell you for a second? Man, if you want to grow, grow in the Lord. And when you grow in the Lord, he has no problem taking you to heights that people could only dream of. I've seen so many people, man, so many people that were shining for God. And God lifted them up and they abandoned God. God has no problem lifting his children up. But don't you forget who God is. Don't you forget who put you in that place. Don't you ever forget who took you from darkness into light, into the marvelous light. God wants to lift his children up. God wants to promote you. I don't know if you ever felt like the world is against you. If the world's against you and God is for you, who or what can be against you? Amen. But God wants to lift you up. Can I say the way to grow in this world? And I'm saying this with all of my, the love in my heart. We think that it's their way, but God is giving you a different way. He says, shine. He says, shine. Shine in your character. Shine in your love. Shine the way I shone in this world. Shine the way I was in this world. But how many times we try to shine through our talents, through our intelligence, and that is not the light of the world. That is not the light of God. Listen, God is saying, I want to lift you up. As a matter of fact, the more you shine, the more I want you up here. Because you're meant to give light to everyone around you. Can I tell you some of the attributes of darkness? In the beginning it says that there was darkness and there was chaos. If there is chaos in your house, it's because you need to shine like Christ. You need to be able to be Christ-like. If there's chaos in your job, if there's chaos in our country, I'm sorry to tell you, but it's not the politi politician's fault. It is the Christian's fault. It is not the evildoer's fault. Is that light hasn't been shining as it should. Amen. I know that's some people are really mad at some other people. That, you cannot. This is our responsibility, not theirs. They cannot shine with the light of God. You and I have the light of the world. So when you come across darkness, you cannot be mad at darkness. It's just simply been the absence of our king in their lives. Because no representative has said, let me shine in your life. If you are fighting against your family, you're fighting against somebody, stop fighting against darkness. Simply shine. Shine like God asked you to shine. Once again, it is our honor, it is our privilege to shine. Now we don't shine, listen, we don't shine because we want to be great, because we want to be seen, but because we want God to be seen. Because we want our Father to be glorified. It says here in the latter part of this, part, this, this verse, it says, Verse 16, let your light so shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. God is saying to you, I made you the light of the world. I charged you with my blessing so that you may shine and I could lift you up so that when that happens, my Father will be glorified. So people will say, oh my God, how did you change how did you grow how did you have this how do you have that how do you become that and you would simply say it's not me but the one that is in me it is not me but it's my father in heaven and he loves you too it is the glory of God listen that you would shine let me repeat that again did you know that God wants you that sounds very strange to some of you here today but God wants you to be blessed beyond measure you know, in this church, we don't sell blessings. It's not like give so you can get. If you ever hear that message, please forgive us. That is not the intention ever. 
You never give so you get. You give because he gave everything already. Amen? You don't give because you don't want to feel bad about it. You give because he is worthy to receive everything and anything that we are and we have. Amen? So that is not the purpose. But instead, it's simply the understanding, the, the knowledge, the assurance, the conviction that God is meant to receive everything that we have. Listen, please. God wants to lift you up. He wants to raise you, not because you gave him, but because when you grow, when you develop, when you change, when you shine, he receives the glory. Because he loves you so much, he is your father, and people will say, whose child is that? Let me pause right there. Has anybody ever thought, whose child is that? <laughs> I know we got together service, and some of, last week it might have been my child, today maybe yours. And some people that don't have kids will be like, oh, whose child is that? But the truth is this, God wants that to be said about him when you're shining. Wow, whose kid is this? Look at that child grow. Man, look at that kid. He is shining. I'm not a teacher, but I'm pretty sure teachers in like, in like kindergarten, they have all kinds of kids in that class. And they may not know the parents that well, but they know the parents through the children. Amen or oh man? You're wondering right now, oh my God, what does the teacher think of me? If your kid shows up raggedy, nasty, smelling horrible, holes all over his clothes, dragon breath, cussing up a storm, no homework, what is the teacher going to think of you, my amazing godly parents? Whose child is that? But if your child shows up shining, mm -mm -mm, whose child is that? And they will wonder, what can we do, parents, so that other kids can have what this kid has? Can I ask you, when was the last time someone said, there's something different about you? When was the last time someone said, nah, you don't belong here? I mean, you do, but there's something different about you. When was the last time someone asked, why are you different? Why is there like this glow in your eye? Why is there a pep in your step? Why is there such happiness? The world calls it, what is it called? What do they call it? The, the aura, the, the, what do you call it? Aura, aura, yeah, the aura. The, you know, well, oh, you got, you got the, the chakras aligned, you know? <laughs> what are you talking about? It sounds like lunch. You know what I mean? Like, like no, you got this, this thing about you. And yeah, yeah it's, it's called the grace of God. Amen. Some people may, may even wonder, like, well, what are you eating? What are you, what are you, what's your diet? What are you drinking? You know, uh, what is, is it Herbalife? What is it? You know, it's like, nah, it's the Holy Spirit. Am I making sense? Like, what is, the, what is changing about you? Now, I know some people change so that they would shine. And that does not last and does not fulfill. But when you begin to shine for God, please listen. He has no problem but to lift you higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. God wants his children to shine so that he would get the glory. Let me put it like this. I brought a, a little example. It's not dark enough outside. But I'm going to ask the lights to be completely turned off. Completely. I know it's going to be kind of hard because it's not dark outside. I should have done this in the, in the spring. Is it summer? Uh, winter. Okay. So turn the lights off real quick. Everybody lights off. All the lights. All the lights. Kill the switch. We're going to have to turn the lights back there off too. Who knows how to turn the lights off back there? All the lights. No, oh, that screen is too fancy for this. Okay, all the lights, all the lights. So that's got to kind of turn the lights, <laughs> lights outside. Okay, so here's the difference though. Check this out. A lot of us believers, what if we gave the service, like we have actually had part of service in dark, darkness like this, right? But think about this for a second, okay? Pretend this is all dark, no one can see anything. Okay, and a lot of believers, so many Christians, think that God is saying, I want my light to shine on you. Like, I, wanna, I want your life to be bright. And what God actually said in these verses, please listen. There's a difference between the light shining on you and you being the light of the world. There's a huge difference. God is saying, wherever you point, wherever you go, there's the light. Okay, what God is trying to say is, I want somebody to understand today... That I'm not just meant to give you light and your life to be brighter. But wherever you shine, I know I don't want to do it in your face, but real quick. <laughs> that wherever you shine, there I am. Okay, come on, give God a round of applause if you're understanding what I'm saying. So, 
A lot of Christians are like, right here, God, like I am. And God is saying, that's not what I'm saying in this verse. That's not what I'm saying. God is not saying, in Matthew chapter 5, he's not saying, I am the light of the world. I want to give you the light of the world so you could shine, so people could see all your perfection in your face and all your goodness. God is saying, no. If you lose a pound, it's because I want my light to shine on somebody else. If you get a race, if you get a race, I want my light to shine in the world. I don't want people to say, oh, you know, oh, you're so awesome. How'd you get the race? It's like, oh, then. It's, not, it's not here. It's here. Amen. If God gives you an awesome ride, an awesome car, that's fine. Even if it's not that awesome, all right, shine. You know, it's amazing to me how many times Christians don't realize this. But God is saying, you are the light of the world. You are meant to shine. And if that is the case, shouldn't we be, shouldn't we be shining at least on one person? Like, shouldn't we be shining on one person at least? And God is asking of us, seriously, today, I want us to understand, to shine. Are you shining on somebody else? Let's turn the lights back on. You've got a round of applause. Why not? If you understand it. <laughs> Who are we today? There's a good challenge. I don't, I don't mean it like a bad thing. I mean it like a wonderful. I pray that you receive what you're hearing. But my challenge is, who are we shining on today? Who are you shining on? Who is the recipient of the light of God deposited in your life? Who is the recipient of the light of God in your life? I want to repeat you again. I will repeat it again. I'm going to ask you to think about this. And my first thought was like, let's have people write it down. Then I thought, maybe let's have people tell the person next to them. But I want you to really think about that. Who is the first recipient of the light in your life? And that's going to change the way you do relationships. You know that. Because you're not the victim. You're not the one who, who is meant to be taken care of. You're the light of your family. You're the light in that relationship. You're the light in your job. Amen. Your boss may not know that, but he's so blessed that he has the light in that place. Amen. I don't know if you know this, but your brother, your sister may not realize it, but you are the light of Christ in that house. Now this is not for you. This is not so you could be amazing, but so that God would be glorified. I want you to understand this, that power has no option but to back down when you step in. Pa Listen, darkness has no option but to retreat when light comes in. Darkness cannot stand your presence. Darkness cannot stand when you shine like Christ called you to shine. Darkness cannot stand. No matter how dark a relationship is. No matter how dark a situation may seem, I promise you this. This is not me telling you as a pastor. This is me telling you as a recipient of the love and the light of God in my own life. But no matter how dark and how glim something seems, you have to remember light has no power but the one that you give it. Light, I mean darkness has no power but the one that you give it. Darkness cannot stand when you stand up. Darkness cannot stand when you stand up. Darkness must flee. The only way, the only way that darkness can stay in your life, in your mind, in your heart, in your family, is if you allow it. So I guess this is simply said like this. If there's any darkness in your family, it's because we're giving it permission to stay. It's because we're saying, it's okay, you darkness in my marriage. Can I challenge you husbands and wives? Can I challenge you parents today and sons and daughters to declare the light of God in your own family? The Bible says that in the beginning, in the very beginning, there was darkness and chaos. And all God said, let there be light. And the universe, the universe. By the way, I don't know if you realize, but the word universe, uni means one. And verse is the word. So in one word, it just happened. Universe. It just happened in one word. God said, uh, and it just happened. <laughs> Bang. And God said, let there be light. When light happens, then you can have plants grow. Then you can have animals grow. When light happens, then things begin to happen. Growth happens when light is there. You know, when a company is in the dark, it cannot grow. It will not grow. When you leave your partner in the dark, it cannot, it just won't develop. What if I ask you today that you would begin to shine and begin to say, God, I want 
to not be in darkness anymore. How do we come out of darkness? And let's finish like this. It's super practical, super simple. The first thing that needs to happen, it sounds dumb and simple. Just turn the light on. Pastor, I know, that sounds easy. Yeah, how do you turn the light on? It's like this. It is very simple. If God is the light of the world, let the Lord in your life as much as possible. How? Through your music, through your word, through spending time with him. Let God shine in your life. Let the Lord come and take place where everything else has pushed them out okay let the lord take the place where everything else has pushed him out what area have you given to the world or to yourself that belongs to god what privileges have you taken that belong to god what decision power do you think you own when it should be god's am i making sense let the light be on stop turning the light off how do we turn the light off? By pretending that we're not the light. The Bible says, listen, that you cannot be hidden. But why are so many Christians hidden? Because light is offensive to some people. And God says, stop hiding. Stop pretending like you're not the light. Stop acting like you don't have the answer to your coworkers. Stop acting like you're not meant to be shining today. Today is the day where God gets glory through your life. So how? Stop pretending that you're not the light. It is so easy to think that you have no responsibility because that means you don't have to respond because you don't have the ability, right? And God is saying you have this great, beautiful responsibility and it is an honor and it is a privilege and it is wonderful that you are meant to shine in your house. What if I said to you, men, for a second, what if men in this church took the charge that I just said, you are meant to be the light in your house? What would happen to our families? What would happen to our children? I'm asking seriously. What would happen if the men, just the men, what if the women didn't hear this sermon? But what if just the man said, I am going to shine for the Lord in my house. I'm going to shine through my patience. I'm going to shine through my dedication. I'm going to shine through my follow through. Woo. But how many people shine for their lack of follow through, for their absence? They shine. For the short temper. They shine for so many reasons. Except for Christ. It is time to say God I want to shine for you. I don't want to shine for my negative things. They shine for not communicating. They shine for not doing what they're supposed to do. I know next week is Father's Day. You're going to get a nicer sermon. But today men. <laughs> if just the men said I want to shine for you Lord. Show me how to be the light in my house. I don't know how. I didn't see my father shine necessarily. I didn't see other people. But I don't want to take that as an excuse. You called me the light of the world. And I want to shine just as you did Jesus. What if God said to you today, you're meant to bring healing to the people that are sick around you. Pastor, I mean that. What if you, God wants you to shine in any way that he would shine in this world. You know that according to the need, the Lord shows himself. According to the need, the Lord calls himself. According to the need, God responds. I don't want to get too weird with this, but some of you here have an amazing prophetic gift. And you've never used that before because you didn't put yourself in the need. You thought it was somebody else's place to prophesy. Now, I'm not saying everybody should be prophesying. By the way, I'm not saying any one of you are prophets. That's not my call. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. What if God wanted to use you to lay hands on somebody and maybe heal, bring healing right? Bring, bring consolation, comfort. What if God wanted to raise somebody from a bed? What if God wanted somebody to receive a hug that day through the gift of love? Am I making sense? But we pull ourselves out of the situation and God's saying, I put you there for a reason. Why are you pulling yourself out? Like you, you, you wanted to go to Target, but I sent you to Walmart. Why are you pretending like you're there to buy fruit? You're not there to buy fruit. You're there because that lady's broken and she needs the light of the world. But instead we're like, no, I'm not the light. I'm not the light. I'm just, I'm just a shadow over here. I'm just, and the light's up there. I'm just a shadow down here. And God's like, no, I put you in this place for a reason. What if I said to you today that it is you who are meant to shine? Other people, let them shine for their absence. You shine because you're there, because you're committed. What if God said to you and I today that I put you here in Los Angeles, not to survive, but to thrive, to grow, to develop. That Los Angeles would know that in here, there's light and the light of the world. Amen. Why don't you give God a big round of applause? Because you understand what I'm trying to tell you. Let's, 
Because I know that the families are here and the kids are here today. I want us all to understand something. I address the men here for a second. But this is not just men. I address the men this way because there's a, a, a deep love in my heart for this generation of men. I feel like men are being so attacked and men are in darkness. In other areas that I, would, I don't have the freedom to speak about right now because of different generations that are here. But man, it's time to get rid of darkness. It's time to say, God, I want to shine. I don't want to be known for the things that I don't do. I want to be known for the things that I do do for you. You know, I think sometimes you are in darkness because you think that that's the only way that you're going to have peace. And I'm telling you this, that true peace doesn't happen in darkness. You may fall asleep in darkness. Have you guys ever had a sleep? Like you're, 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 you fall asleep and you wake up with a headache? You guys ever had like sleep headaches before? Some of you guys are really blessed by, by having sleep headaches. Where you like overslept, you feel like, oh man, I don't know. Like, I, uh, and then you try to sleep it off and it's even worse. Because now your neck starts hurting and your back starts hurting. And you're like, ah. Oh. And God's like, I meant for you to go and grow and stand and move forward. And here my generation's asleep. My church is asleep when it should be roaring, when it should be shouting, when it should be growing and advancing because the light pierces darkness. I want to pray for the families today. I want to pray that we understand the vision of this church. More importantly, the vision of God for our lives. That you are the light of the world. That you are not to be hidden. That you're meant to be put on a lampstand. And that we're meant to glorify God. If somebody was to ask me, what is the vision of God? It is very simple. That none should perish, but that all would have everlasting life. What is the vision of God? To win souls and make disciples of all of the world. What is the vision of God? That those that are lost can come back to him. It is simple. It's always, listen, about the lost. It's always about those that work in, walk in darkness. I want to finish with one simple verse. And I pray that you see that this is our life. This is our call. The reason I decided to preach this today is because I feel like sometimes we get lost in so much beauty also. We get lost in so much busyness. God gives you a child and you get busy. He gives you two, you get even busier. Three and you're like, I don't know what to do with my life. And God's like, go back. Just be light. Just be light. God puts you in a job and you get so busy and God's like, and you're like, oh God, I forgot. No, just be the light. You do a cell group, right? And you, you thought your cell group was meant to grow in numbers. And no, God says, I'm meant for you to be light. I'll lift you up. I'll raise you up. Watch. When you shine, I have no problem bringing the darkness around so they're not in darkness anymore. I have no problem. Matter of fact, there's this amazing story, beautiful story, and it's a true story. Reinhard Bonnke tells us of, of this. He passed away not too long ago. What an amazing man of God. He did this amazing crusade with millions of people all throughout Africa. And he says this, this government hated him so much because they didn't want him there. They did not want Christianity in their country. And they tried to shut him down over and over, a Muslim nation. And they said, you are not allowed to preach here. And Reinhard Bonnke said, I'm sorry, but you don't give me permission. This is not your country. This is the Lord's earth. And I will preach here until he calls me home. Listen, this man put together this huge campaign. Huge campaign. There was thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people. All the people, listen, that were called from the church. And the churches rallied. And they were praying. Many people were afraid because of the government. So they didn't come out. And that day, they told him, Reinhardt, the police is coming to shut us down. What do we do? Reinhard Bunke says that in his German accent, he's a German, oh God, what am I to do? And I could hear it, man, it's so beautiful. He said, God said to him, let your light shine. And he let his light shine. And they went on to worship God and to preach. And it started getting dark. Listen. And the police came. And they did something that they thought were going to shut everything out. Listen. They turned the power off to the whole city. The entire city was in darkness. What these people didn't know is that Reinhard Punky carries these powerful generators with him. Because that's what he does. And he turned the lights on independent from them. And everyone in the city that was afraid, the only place with light was Reinhardt's Bunky campaign. Everyone from all the cities around came to hear the name of Jesus. And so many people gave their life to Jesus Christ. The police were amazed. They didn't know what to do. They couldn't do anything. All they could do was hear the gospel. Why? Because Reinhardt Bunky refused to shut the lights down. 
And I'm telling you, this is what exactly the enemy wants to do. He wants to stop. He wants to stop your light. This is how. Confusion, busyness, by bitterness, by you just wanting to complain and whine. And God is saying, stop complaining. Stop whining. Stop fighting. The one way that you can shine is by doing what I called you to do. Instead of trying to attack darkness, just shine, baby. Just shine. You, you go and attack darkness. There's nothing to do. Just be who I called you to be. Be powerful. Be bold. Share the gospel. Share your faith. It's so beautiful what happens when you become transparent. Listen. When you start being in your own home, the light of God. I'm not saying perfect because that is tough. I already have. There's only one that is perfect. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. One day when you die, you'll be perfect too. Praise God. But up until that day, we're still going to try. But listen, what a beautiful thing it is to be able to say, I am the light in this home. When you step into your house, men, what if your home changes for the best? Even better. I know it was already good. But what if when you step in, your kids are so glad that you showed up. Your wife can't wait for you to come home because the light is coming home. Amen, because light's about to show up. What if I said to you, why light? Not just because you smile, but because you bring something different. You bring power. You bring peace. You bring a word from God in season because you have vision for your family. That is the light of God. To say, I know that the world is turning the lights off around, but I got my own generator. Am I making this? I got a generator. I don't care how dark the world is. Let them come. They'll just see it even more. They don't realize that's just advertisement. It's the way it's supposed to work. We have our own generator. And to say, God, I want to be the light in my family. Would you be able to just stand up with me for a second? I want to read this one last verse for us. And I want us to understand the power that there is in the name of Jesus. That God is just so amazing, so incredible. Thank you, Lord, so much for your word, for your truth. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. I want to read it to you in the message. We'll go through through 7 in the message version. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For those who lived in a land of deep shadows, light, some burst of light. You repopulated the nation. You expanded its joy. Oh, they're so glad in your presence. Festival joy. The joy of a great celebration, sharing rich gifts and warm greetings. The abuse of oppressors and cruelty of tyrants. All their whips and clubs and curses is gone. Done away with. A deliverance as surprising and sudden as Gideon's old victory or Midian. The boots of all those invading troops, along with their shirts soaked with innocent blood, will be, will be piled in a heap of burnt. A fire that will burn for days. For a child has seen has been born for us the gift of a son for us he'll take over the running of the world his name will be amazing counselor strong god eternal father prince of wholeness his ruling authority will grow and there will be no limits to the wholeness he brings he'll rule from the historic david throne over the promised kingdom he'll put the kingdom on a firm footing and keep it going with fair dealing and right living beginning now and lasting always the zeal of god of the angel armies will do all this. It says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For those who lived in a land of sh deep shadows, light, some bursts of light. You know, this is Isaiah over 700 years, 800 and something years before Jesus Christ walked on this earth. And he has, Isaiah the prophet is prophesying and he's saying there's going to be a day, there's going to be a moment when Jesus Christ will come on this earth. And he will shine a great light. And the people who walked in darkness will walk in darkness no more. The oppressors cannot oppress them anymore. And I realized something so exciting, so beautiful. I know I said it to you in the beginning, but I don't know if you received it as revelation. That Jesus came to shed light on this world. And now he gave you and I the charge to be who he was while he was here. Again, I want you to realize you're not here passing time church we're not here spending time we're not here expecting the next sunday please listen this week shine on someone 
shine with the light of God in your job. Shine us, God. Say, God, I want to move forward with you. God, I want to represent you wherever I go. I want to be your ambassador. Jesus, thank you for the torch. I want to carry it with joy. Amen? To say, God, help me to shine in my home. Give me the wisdom. Give me the courage. Give me the patience to shine in my home. Amen? Give me the ability to shine. I've said to you guys before, I cannot wait. I cannot wait for us to have this big old building, huge building. But we don't want a big building for a big building's sake. I don't know if you realize it, but that's going to happen. It's happening regardless. Like we're going to have this amazing venue, incredible venue. But it's not to have an amazing venue, but so we can fit as many people as we possibly can. Amen. So they can see the light of the world. Come on. So we could see the light of Christ. It is not just so we can have, but it's so that his glory would shine. And here's my thinking. I cannot be the only one that thinks like that. I cannot be the only one to think, hey, I'm meant to shine in this world. I'm sorry to tell you this, but one day I'm not going to be your pastor. One day I'm going to be in heaven right by your side. And we're going to be standing before the same Jesus, the same maker. And God is going to ask you the same question he asked me. What did you do with my son Jesus Christ? What did you do with the call that I gave you? This is not a bad thing, guys. I'm not trying to put some burden on you. I'm trying to tell you this. Listen, we were meant to carry the cross. We were meant to move forward. You know how beautiful it is to understand that CFF is a church filled with pastors? Some of you guys are just got thrown in the loop right now. I mean that. That a pastor is not a position. It's not a podium. A pastor is a heart. A pastor is somebody who shepherds somebody else who says, let my light shine on your life. There's enough in me, enough in me to bring you to him. There's enough in me that you could see him. Amen. What if I charge you today with the same thing that Christ is just telling you right now? Remind you, you are the light of the world. And if you're not, maybe because you don't have Christ yet in your life and that is not your fault. Maybe you haven't understood, but today, let it be understood. That if there's darkness inside of you, there's still areas that you refuse to let go is because Jesus is not the king of your life just yet. Because you might have been exposed in some areas to God, some areas that are in pain that you want God to fix. But he's not the king of your heart yet. His dominion is not in you yet. And today I want to ask you to surrender your life to God. Surrender those areas, those addictions, the hidden corners that nobody sees, that nobody knows. Because sometimes, you guys, please listen. Sometimes it is those dark corners, those dark areas that you do not surrender to God that keep you from shining for Him. It's the shame, it's the guilt. But it's the time to say to God, God, take a hold of every area of my life. I want to be who you called me in this world. I don't want to just be a member of a church. I don't want to just, I mean, that's beautiful, guys. Your service to the Lord is amazing. This, this church has 60, 70 volunteers. What a powerful, beautiful thing. I don't know if you realize, but God is doing amazing things. But man, that is not the end result. That is not the purpose. That's beautiful stuff. But man, that you would shine for God. That when he finally calls you home, you would say, God, here I am. And I did everything you called me. Everything I possibly could. With everything you gave me, God, I did not hide my light. I shone for you, God. And I was shining every day for you. Amen? Is that making sense for you guys? Amen? We don't want, again, just a church full of church followers. We want a church full of pastors, man. Like shepherds. Women that say, I'll be a light in my life. Men that say, God, put me in darkness. I'll show them who you are. Amen. That is not afraid to have a conversation with somebody who's full of darkness. No matter how wealthy, how nice, how kind, how good looking. Well, no matter what they have, you say, I have the light of the world. And a city set on a hill should not be hidden. I'm right here. God, let me shine in somebody's life. Amen. Be desperate to shine in people's life. That is our call. That is our purpose. Close your eyes for a second. Let me pray for those of you that have hidden corners. Those of you that have darkness inside that you haven't yet exposed to the Lord. Or maybe you have and you say, why do I keep going back? Maybe you didn't understand what I said to you earlier. But you are the light of the world. God called you to shine. Darkness is not normal in you. It's not how things should be. Expose them to the Lord. Let the light of God rot away the yoke of darkness. Let the light of God, let the word of God, let the spirit of God set you free in the name of Jesus. Man, some of you here have been for a long time struggling with a, an area of your character. And God is saying, 
I want to shine. I want you to shine. I want you to shine. And that area will not hold you back anymore. Let's surrender our lives to God. If there's somebody here who hasn't yet given their life to Jesus and you've been walking in darkness, darkness of mind, darkness of, of heart, maybe emotionally you feel like you've been in the dark for a long time, and God would say today is a beautiful day. Today is the best day of the rest of your life. Today is amazing because today my light will pierce darkness in you. If you just tell him, Jesus Christ, I give you my life. I surrender every dark corner of my heart. Dear God, would you please shine in me. Shine, God. Shine, shine. God, remove the darkness of my life, of my heart, of my soul. God, I want you to shine in me. Come on, ask God to help you to expose those things, to, to get rid of those things. Come on, ask God. Tell him, God, I want to shine for you, Lord. I want every part of my life to be dominated by you. I don't want, God, the control of areas that are full of darkness. Dear God, I ask you right now that your light would shine in every corner of my life. I surrender it to you. I give you my present, my future, and my past. God, would you change me? God, mold me into the person that you want me to be. God, I put myself in your hands today. And I ask you, please, Lord, I want to fulfill the purpose in my life. Let me pray for the rest of all of us. Dear God, I thank you for this beautiful moment. But I ask you right now that the revelation of the light of the world would come into them. God is going to begin to show you day after day who you're supposed to shine upon who is the recipient of the light of God in your life that you do not quit that you do not stop that you do not judge them but rather say God thank you because you put me here so your judgment judgment doesn't have to fall upon them God give me the tools the resources the wisdom and the boldness to shine and shine bright God I ask you that you help me God to expose the darkness in people's lives. Not in a negative or a mean way, but in a way that will heal. In a way that will bring restoration in people's lives. Thank you so much, God, because light gives direction. And there's amazing people here today, myself included, God. We have vision. We have your vision. Before I step down, I want to tell you guys right here with your eyes closed. One of the greatest attributes that light has, yes, is dissipating darkness. But the other one? is to make light beautiful to make life colorful because of light we can see colors because of light the reflection of it we can see the wonders of this world God says as I God would say to you today in the degree that my light shines in your life that joy that beauty that desire the wide-eyed innocence the desire to live and to have others live will grow and grow and grow and grow. Some of you here only see darkness. And God would say, let me show you the colors of the world I created. Let me show you the beauty of people around you. Let me show you all the amazing things I have in store for you. Let the light of God shine in you. And there you become the light of the world. Dear God, thank you so much. Would you put your hand on the person next to you? And let's just pray together that God would help us to be the light to this world. Pray for that person next to you. Tell them, God, give them wisdom. God, give them strength. Let them be the light in people's lives, in their families, God, in their jobs, in their school. God, come on, ask. Begin to pray for that person. Pray that God would let this, this amazing church shine. Tell them, God, we come together today in your purpose, in your heart. And we say to you, Lord, we want to shine for you. God, thank you so much because we get the privilege, we get the honor, God, to shine in the world that is so full of darkness. Thank you, God, because as we do this, you, your name will be glorified. Ask God to give that person divine appointments, amazing opportunities to shine. Ask God to give that person the ability to recognize the opportunities of God in their life. Ask God to give them boldness and courage. Come on, God, give them courage and boldness. God, give them the ability to say things that you ask them to say. Nothing less, nothing more. Just what you have in store for that person. God, I pray right now that you give them the ability to see, God. Give them dreams. Give them the heart for others. Give them compassion, God. Let this church burn for you, God, so bright that the world cannot deny that you are here and you are the Lord of these people, God. Let them shine for you, God. Let them shine for you, Lord. Let that person shine for you, God. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. Let them shine.